Welcome to my first ever video that took two years to publish. Why? Well, the last time I came here, I left because it was so dirty. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased and honest opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Netrang. If you'd like to know the exact nightly rate that I paid for my stay, or my next 5 videos in queue, please check out the description below. Alright, a quick bit of housekeeping first, no pun intended. I just landed in Kamran to the south of Netrang, and am now arriving at the Anlam Retreats Lounge on the quote-unquote mainland. Note that this is commonly referred to as the mainland and the area where the hotel is as an island, but it is in fact a connected, but nearly inaccessible, peninsula. After arriving here, I was offered a glass of iced tea while being checked in and given some of the spiciest candy ginger that mankind has ever known. Once a few more guests arrive, we'll be on our way to take our boat transfer to the property itself. By the way, all of the footage that you're seeing now has been shot in 2023, just to be clear. This one's gonna have a bit of talking in it, so just prepare yourself. Let me tell you part one of this story. This channel began back in 2021 Back then, the channel was, let's say, a backup plan that I really didn't have a defined purpose for at the time, besides presenting beautiful hotels in Vietnam. That was my priority then, showcasing hotels and resorts in Vietnam. I was as honest then as I am now, but the thought of making a negative review back then literally never crossed my naive YouTube mind. This trip was kind of my first grand plan for the channel, as I planned on visiting all three resorts on the Ninvan Peninsula. Uh, we might as well just go to the map. So, Nha Trang is a coastal city in southern Vietnam. There are plenty of beautiful resorts and hotels in and around the city and neighboring Cam Ranh, many on this channel already. But the three really special ones are here on the Ninvan Peninsula. Six Senses, Lali Resort, and An Lam Retreats. And I planned to visit all three of them, and I did. My first night in March of 2021 was at the Lalia Resort. Then I came here. Long story short, while filming the room, I realized the room was so dirty that I wasn't comfortable to sleep there. I'll show you the original photos when we do the rooms tour later. At the time, COVID was a really big deal here in Vietnam, and cleanliness was by a long shot supposed to be the absolute number one priority. Here, it wasn't. There was no manager or supervisor on site, so I was just speaking with my butler and eventually to the manager on the phone. After a little while, the manager was starting to understand the state of the room and he offered to refund my money and pay for a flight and accommodation for me to return at a later date. I'll be very honest, at the time I had 76 subscribers and I just didn't have the slightest idea of how to navigate what would have been the channel's first ever bad review. I just wasn't comfortable publishing a bad review when I didn't have that much on the channel to back up the fact that I wasn't trying to make this a negative channel. So I, for better or for worse, decided just to abandon it, for then at least. That afternoon, I went back to Lalia, and the next day on to Six Senses. Both of those reviews are on the channel and linked above now. So all of that said, now let's get into what should be a normal review and full tour. Now we're at the Sen restaurant, the centerpiece of the resort here. Once inside, I was introduced to my butler, the same one that I had two years earlier, and was given another glass of iced tea and a fruit skewer. Now, I understand that there are a few ways that I could have managed this video today. First, I could have just not come back. But in the context of coming back, I was going back and forth between do I explain the history or do I just act like this was my first time here? For no reason other than being as transparent as I can, I chose the former. And just to be very clear, I returned here on my own dime. The previous manager no longer works here, and the resort staff did not remember who I was. Just on the north side of the Sen restaurant is the primary beach and pool area, as well as an open-air lounge that, frankly, doesn't really feel like it's being used for anything in particular these days, besides wooden game board displays.
The coastline here, as with all Ninvan Bay properties, is pristine, but I do think that Anlam's beach leaves a little bit to be desired. First off, it's just pretty small, and the umbrellas that are there look like they've been here since the resort reopened in 2017. Lastly, normally I don't blatantly compare properties to each other, but I think it's relevant here, and Anlam's Beach is absolutely nothing compared to Lalia or Six Senses. You might be thinking, well, Six Senses is a lot more money, and you would be correct. But Lalia, they're actually a bit cheaper than Anlam usually, and their beach is massive and beautiful. Behind the beach is a storage area for some of their water sports equipment, which could do with a, let's say, bit of organization. The pool here, on the other hand, is truly beautiful and will generally not be all that busy since the majority of the 37 villas here have their own pools. Prior to 2017, this property operated as Kalam Resorts. Anlam, the brand that now operates it, used to operate Lalia. It's all a very specific type of messy likely with a very dramatic story behind it all. So, who's coming here? Who's choosing Anlam over the other two options? Well, this is actually an easy one. Both last time that I was here, and this time, and from anything that I just know about this resort, it is clearly geared towards a younger, local crowd. From my observations, I'd say the average guest is a couple, local, and in their 30s. I do not mean this in an insulting way, at all, but those that choose Anlam, it seems, are the ones more interested in the Instagram and TikTok moments than the finer details of Vietnamese hospitality and cuisine. On the south side of the restaurant is a very rocky but arguably even more beautiful coastline. Along this shore is a row of beachfront pool villas which all have stairs leading down to the rocky shore. One thing the resort does have going for it though is its natural beauty. It's not a super fussy manicured place, but I think they've done the landscaping in a very smart way that gives it a neat but effortless vibe. All right, so let's head to my room now. I had a Bayview pool villa. Now, before we take a look at this room, the room that I had in 2023, I'm gonna show you what I had last time that I was here. I also have the full videos of the room, but the photos obviously show the details a little bit better. Okay, let's start out with the hairs. Here's a sample of five of them. Next up, let's call this the inexplicable but removable stains and general grime category. This, by the way, isn't just some dark hidden corner. This is the countertop and backsplash of the bathroom sink. And don't even get me started with the dust and dirt on the floor. And don't you dare move that furniture. Some more, I don't know, let's call this category cigarette burns and gunk. Then we have the two reasons that broke this elephant's back. What I believe are blood stains under the pillowcases the only reason I looked is because they were dark enough that you could see them through the pillowcases, and then this, which definitely was a blood stain. And then the final cherry on the top was an envelope which was part of the COVID care kit at the time. This one had face masks inside, and the envelope itself, well, it had lipstick on it. I'll say that that's around 70% of the photos that I had from the room. The rest of them do show other things, but they don't illustrate it quite as clearly. So, let's see how we're doing this time. Yeah. 
By the way, do you see this eye hook right here? Just keep that in mind for later. I am very happy to say that, by and large, the room is much, 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 much cleaner. The cleanest room I've ever had? No. But perfectly acceptable. I checked in every single similar spot from the photos that I showed you, and I did not find any offending dirt, even when I moved that giant ottoman in the bathroom. That said, the interiors, I think, are not aging all that well. The oranges are just getting rustier, and the walls and ceiling have this greenish tint to them that's just not... not lovely. For the most part, the villas are well-equipped. There are plenty of outlets and seating spaces. There's a proper coffee machine and a well-stocked minibar. The AC works well, and the bathroom is nicely appointed. All in all, it is a nice place to stay. My only complaint inside the room itself would be the floors, which are getting in pretty bad condition, and the mini bar, which was so noisy that I needed to unplug it at night. The bathroom is huge with a freestanding wooden bathtub and double vanity along with a massive ottoman in the center. The ottoman surely for sprawling out on while dressed in all white linen for the perfect photo. So you already know how much I paid for my stay here, but do you know how much the hotel paid me to publish this video? I'm sorry, I can't get through this without laughing. Not only was Anlam unaware that I'd be making this video, they actually had no idea who I was. Any small resort you would think would have notes about their past customers? Not here. So luckily, this was actually an anonymous review. When I make review videos, I don't want any special treatment, and that's why I focus on the anonymity of it. That is more challenging than you'd think, though. So that's why every like, comment, and subscription really does mean a lot and helps the channel to continue to grow and keep this twice weekly content flowing. Thanks very much for watching today. If you'd like to support further, my Patreon's linked in the description below.
By this point, it had been a bit of a long day for me already, so I decided to order room service to hold me over until dinner. This was a pizza, obviously, and what they called a side salad. If we were judging for size or a presentation, I'd say it's an easy A+. But for flavor? Very middle-of-the-road Western fare for a specific Southern Vietnamese audience. Everything is just way sweeter than it should be, and the pizza dough was akin to cardboard. After a few mini storms passed through, it was time to check out the Sen restaurant and the upstairs Sen deck, which is the resort's bar and lounge. It was a very nice and relaxed atmosphere, but it didn't seem like it got that much use and made me just feel like I wasn't supposed to be up here. But it, it was open. For dinner, first of all, top marks for not just extra lime, but extra lime cut in two different ways. I appreciate the attention to detail. And I enjoyed the crashing waves as I looked at the massive menu. After the disappointing room service for lunch, I decided to play it very safe and just order some local basics. First up, I had the bait fish salad, which is a specialty in Nha Trang and in slightly different variations, all the way down the coast, down to Phu Quoc as well. For the most part, it was good, but it was just a little bit fishier than the clean, fresh taste that it should have had. As I go into the main, let me just quickly mention, the service at the resort is hit or miss, but the hit came from the restaurant itself. The restaurant staff were very well-intentioned and accommodating, but they, they could use a little bit more training. For the main dish, I ordered salted egg prawns. The fact that the shrimp weren't cleaned aside, let's not even think about that for a second. This was just not good at all. Salted egg prawns are a dish that any cook in Vietnam can make blindfolded. But this just had absolutely no balance to the sauce. It was oddly very earthy. I did my best just to get it down because I, I personally hate sending food back. I think the majority of people would have sent this one back though. The next morning, things did not start well. There was no Wi-Fi. And also, the coffee machine was broken. No matter what I did, it wouldn't work correctly. That wasn't helping things, but the main problem was no Wi-Fi. Especially a problem here, since cell phone reception is not great. And all communication with staff is done via WhatsApp. From around 5 a.m. until 6.45, I was trying to do my own MacGyvering and trying to contact staff to no avail. Since the staff didn't have data turned on on their phones, the WhatsApp messages just didn't go through. Also, while the phone in my room worked, as in it turned on, this is all that would happen. Please try your call again later. At 7 o'clock, I went to breakfast as it opened and asked the staff there. At that time, the staff there had not even realized there was no Wi-Fi. In the meantime, let's take a look at the buffet on offer. And yes, there are dogs everywhere at this resort. And yes, the dogs are in the buffet. And no, the staff don't really do much about it. Overall, the buffet was much better than dinner. There was a decent selection of food. And while it wasn't winning any awards, it was good overall and just about what I was expecting. There was also an egg station and a noodle soup station, which opened around 20 minutes later. So, about the Wi-Fi, it never came back. I was due to leave at 1 p.m. and ended up leaving a couple hours earlier since there was no definitive answer as to when or if the service would be fixed soon. 
Let's talk a little bit about the service because it was um, awkward. So when I got to my room originally when I was checking in, I noticed that on the outside of the door of the bedroom, there was a padlock and no other lock on the door. This was the eye hook that I mentioned earlier. I asked my butler where the key is and she said, no, we don't have locks on the door. So I pointed to the lock. Okay, here's the thing. Lalia also doesn't have locks on their doors. I don't know why any resort on earth these days would do this. It is what it is. But if there's a padlock on the outside of my villa, that's telling me one thing. That's telling me that there's a reason to have a padlock on the outside of the villa. So with the amount of equipment that I travel with, I want to use it too. I was just trying to explain this in the easiest, calmest, most straightforward way possible, but the point just wasn't getting across. And not for lack of English. My butler spoke perfect English. She told me that she would always accompany any staff that went into the room to make sure, essentially, that they didn't steal anything. I was trying to explain that's not my point, and I wasn't going anywhere fast. I was starting to get frustrated and asked her just, okay, fine, no lock. Give me a paper guaranteeing the security of my property then. I was told that's not possible. Okay. Five minutes later, the manager comes running to the room with my suitcase, strangely enough, out of breath and trying to explain the system. I explain again, I get it, kumbaya, all that, fine. But there's literally a lock on the door. Please, can I just have a key to it? It's very easy. She said, okay, but there's only one copy of the key, so the butler would need to come and get you each time housekeeping needed to go in the room. And the manager said that she would also accompany them inside the room every time. I really, really cannot explain how awkward this is at this point. I really was not making this into a thing. I had what I thought was a very simple, reasonable request. Easy peasy. Another staff finally came running with another lock. This one was said to have two keys. Wonderful. As it turned out, of course, that lock only had one key, but whatever. A pet peeve of mine is when hotel staff respond disproportionately to a request, a simple request. All of this was just unnecessary. I didn't need to be appeased. I didn't need to have the system explained 12 times. I just wanted a key. Okay, so I do actually love all the different paths around the resort, and there are plenty of them here, and plenty of places to get lost around, walking up and down the stream near the spa and fitness center and the yoga pavilion. So, no Wi-Fi. I had the boat rearranged for 11.30. As I was walking out of my room to go to the pier, the manager came by and walked with me. Again, awkward is the only word that I have. If I'm not asked for feedback, I generally don't offer it on the spot. But if I am asked, then let's sit down. I'm happy to share everything. She was very nice, but just seemed out of her element in a customer-facing role. She was literally asking me for feedback and then responding to my feedback with, I'll give you my email and you can send me all the details there. This exchange went back and forth like three times. I didn't say this outright to her, but my thinking was, we are literally here right now. You asked me, so let's, let's just talk. After a while, we were talking about something completely unrelated and then finally it was just my time to go. Yeah, so yeah, I know this was a lot of talking in this one, but I wanted to give the full story as best as I could so you could understand where I was coming from. The resort is beautiful. With a refresh of the rooms and perhaps the beach, it could be a truly beautiful resort that's worth coming to. But in its current state, with its below average food offerings, ironically overbearing but also lacking service, and $400 price tag, it gets a pass from me simply because Lalia and Six Senses are so much freaking better. Please check out my other reviews on the channel, or stay tuned for my next review, because I'm going to be doing my first ever Resorts Revisited video, where I check in on Lalia and see if the experience that I had two years ago is just as good now. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on, so you don't miss my upcoming content from Lalia, Seoul, Tokyo, and of course, lots and lots more. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.